Hello and welcome to this um, product focus session. You may have heard of photonic integrated circuits in your field of application. However, you may not know that this upcoming technology is set to revolutionize many industries and poses a series of new challenges when it comes to spectral characterization of these next generation components. I'm Francois Cuny, product line manager for X4 Optics with a keen interest in peak testing. Over the next 15 minutes, I will tell you more about these testing challenges and how you can overcome them with X4 instruments and expertise. Photonic integrated circuits are fabricated on wafer in the same way as electronic processes. The substrate used is made of special materials that enable photonic functionalities, such as indium phosphide or silicon nitride, for example. Peak based on silicon are often referred to as silicon photonics. Peak technology is being developed for a wide range of applications, from autonomous cars to quantum computing or sensing, and particularly in telecoms and datacoms where PIC are been, have been at the heart of the transceiver products for many years. But why is this technology drawing so much attention? It is because for the first time in photonics history, a component offers extreme compactness and provides faster and denser photonic functionalities than any existing optical system before. In some cases, it also offers functionalities that are simply not available in bulk optics. Another key advantage is the low cost for mass production. And finally, these components operate with a reduced amount of electricity, optimizing power consumption, and as a result, are better for the environment. But PIC is still a technology in its infancy. Testing plays a major role in the PIC development process, feeding results back to design engineers for improvement of process design kit. It also improves control during manufacturing, helping PIC foundries learn more about fabrication processes. Testing packaged devices can also be performed to compare characteristics against specifications. Now, testing these brand new optical components comes with its set of challenges. Often, these components are so complex that state-of-the-art test equipment becomes mandatory. The sheer volume of chips to be tested calls for a dramatic reduction in test time, but with no compromise on equipment response time, accuracy or repeatability. It is of paramount importance to identify so-called known good dyes and reject any bad chips as early as possible in the production process. And since the initial investment for such test equipment may be significant, scalability and cost reduction are also very important. I would also add one more challenge to this peak testing equation. The fact that this technology brings photonics to the la a large volume of users, developers, customers. A majority of these people have little to no expertise in photonics. And as a result, photonics testing needs to be integrated in a user-friendly in instrument, greatly simplifying the test process. Exfo has been working with key actors in the PIC industry to bring best-in-class characterization equipment for both active or passive optical components. Active optical components are devices that emit light, such as lasers or amplifiers. They are usually found on indium phosphide substrates. This type of component is usually tested with an optical spectrum analyzer, such as Exfo's OSA20. The setup in this case is simple and only requires the laser source to be connected to the OSA for testing 
and analysis. Passive optical components guide and transform light spectral properties. Good examples include filters or interferometers based on ring resonators, for example. They are found mainly in silicon photonics. Passive components exhibit extremely high contrast insertion loss that is strongly wavelength dependent. ExoCTP10, component testing platform, operates with a tunable laser T100SHP to enable fast and reliable measurement of passive components. Let's take a closer look at how the CTP10 performs high quality spectrum. Using the swept wavelength technique, the CTP10 controls one or several tunable lasers. During the sweep of each laser, the CTP10 synchronously records optical wavelengths and power reaching the device under test, as well as the optical power reaching its detectors. The method is extremely fast. It allows for picometer resolution spectrum with a very large power dynamic range. Additional advantages of the CTP10 are a large power port count up to 100 when two main frames are combined, and a large spectral coverage from 1240 nanometers to 1680 nanometers thanks to the combination of several lasers. The CTP10 is not limited to simple insertion loss spectral measurement. It allows advanced measurement such as polarization dependent loss, PDL, or return loss simply by adding specialized modules to the unit. Last month, X4 launched the IL PDL OPM2 module, a module that simply inserts inside the CTP10 and enables insertion loss and polarization dependent loss to be measured over an unprecedented wavelength range. The system exhibits excellent PDL accuracy between 1260 and 1620 nanometers and can be operated over the full telecom wavelength range. The plug and play module is fully integrated inside the CTP10 for mainframe and comes with two optical detectors to optimize costs. In the following demonstration, the tunable laser and the DUT are already connected to the CTP10. Let's take a look at the user interface of the CTP10. The CTP10 is composed of two views. The first view is modules and lasers, reproducing the physical position of each module inside the CTP10 at the top and the available lasers to be used at the bottom. In our case, we have a good selection of modules, either optical detectors, a scan sync for wavelength recording, an IL-PDL or IL-RL OPM2 for insertion loss and PDL or insertion loss and return loss, and the FBC, which is a full band combiner, enabling the combination of up to four lasers into one single output. At the bottom, we can control each laser independently, switching it on or off or controlling the wavelengths. The second view is subsystem. In this view, we can perform spectral measurements and analysis. In our case, an interleaver where insertion loss and PDL has been measured. It's possible for each of these to measure a live trace, a max, a min, or an averaged trace. The setup is reprodu reproduced in the subsystem setup. This allows the CTP10 to completely automate the number of traces and which data to analyze. Let's load a different set of configuration, testing an AWG.
In this case, the subsystem is slightly more complicated with three lasers connected to a full band combiner and a series of multiple outputs from the DUT being tested simultaneously. We can see on the graph that each trace corresponds to one particular port of the AWG WDM MUX and is being measured with very high accuracy. Analysis is also performed. Coming back to peak testing, let's see a real-life use case where the CTP10 was integrated in a wafer-level test solution. In collaboration with MPI probe stations, ring resonators from a Hewlett-Packard Enterprise wafer were characterized. You can see the CTP10 equipped with two lasers at the back of the probe handler. Let's see how the CTP10's interface operates when controlled remotely for spectral characterization. Prior to the measurement, the CTP10 has been set up to perform wavelength scans at 100 nanometers per second with a one picometer wavelength resolution. The wavelength span of the measurement covers the O band. When the probe handler has aligned the first ring resonator, a scan is started on the CTP10. The progress is shown at the top right corner of the CTP10's interface. After a few seconds, the first component is measured and the setup moves to the second component. Each result comes after about five seconds. For each measurement, analysis can be carried out. Since acquisition, display, analysis are all performed by the same instrument, the process is extremely fast. In our example, we can also see that the rapidly changing insertion loss of each device is correctly tracked by the instrument, making reliable measurements even at full scanning speed and with no restriction on power or wavelength accuracy or resolution. The CTP-10 is part of many other X4 instruments dedicated to spectral measurements of active, or passive components, or even hybrid devices. Don't hesitate to visit our website for more information about their performances. Thank you for watching this product focus session. If you have any questions related to testing PIC, or any of the products shown during this presentation, don't hesitate to get in touch. Thanks again and stay safe.